hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Facebook 3D photo using GIMP 2.10. So if I open up this folder on my desktop, I've got these two images. I've got this one with this background here, and then I've got a picture of this tree. And I'll put links to these two images in the YouTube description so you can follow this tutorial. Just download the images from the website and you can follow me. So we'll open up GIMP software. And we'll drag and drop the background first. So here we have the background image and let's drag and drop the tree as well. Now the tree I've picked specifically because it's already been cut out. You can see it's got an alpha channel there and it's got a transparent background. Um, this just saves us a lot of time having to cut this image out. So this is a good image to use. And what we will do is resize that image first. So let's click on the tree and we'll go to the resize tool or the scale tool. We'll click on the tree and we're going to scale the tree down to about, uh, let's see, roughly about, about this sort of size and then click scale. I think that should be okay. And then we want to create some sort of shadow. We want the tree to be casting some sort of shadow. So to do the shadow, uh, let's just name this. We're going to rename this. Just double click and call it tree main. Let's call this one background for now. And we're going to right click and duplicate this tree layer. So now we've got two copies of the tree. Um, and let's drag this one down. So we've got tree at the top, the main one. And underneath we'll have tree shadow. Okay, so we've got two copies of the tree. They're sitting exactly on top of each other. And we need to work with this, this bottom one, right? So what we'll do, um, what we will do is uh, first we need to flip the image. So let's click on the flip tool and we want to flip it vertically. So then click on the tree and now it's upside down. Let's grab the move tool and we'll move the tree down so that it's sitting underneath this tree like this. So it's, this is almost like our shadow now, right? And we want to squash this tree down. So we want to use the scale tool. So let's use the uh, scale tool here. We'll click on this bottom tree and we'll click on the bottom here. And what we will do is, um, Let's see, we need to hold down the shift key. So holding down the shift key will stop it from scaling on perspective. We wanna scale it down to squash it like this, this sort of shape here. And then we'll click scale, and then we'll use the move tool and move it back up. And that's kind of gonna kind of be the shadow. I think we need to scale it a bit more. So let's uh, click back on the scale tool and we'll hold down the shift key <coughs> and we'll scale it. <coughs> just a little bit more, something like this. And we'll click scale. And then we use the move tool and move that underneath here. And the shadow should really be black sort of color, right? So let's go to color. Let's go to, uh, let's see. Let's go to um, desaturate and then desaturate here. And we'll click okay. That will make it grayscale. Then we can go back to color. We can go to levels and we'll drag this handle across all the way and that will make it black. And then we will add a Gaussian blur, right? So let's just click on the bottom layer, see if it's lined up. It's probably a little bit misaligned. So let's just move it to the left slightly, being very picky here. So we just shift it to the left a few pixels. You can use the arrow keys to move things like on the pixel level. And then we can see it's aligned nicely now. Let's click back on the shadow tree. Let's go to filter and we'll go to blur and we do a Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna drag across here until we're happy with that blur. So something I reckon around here will be good. Maybe a little bit more, something like this. We'll click OK. Let's click on the background. And that's our shadow being casted by this tree. So it looks a bit more realistic now, right, with the shadow. Now, what we want to do is save this as one image. Let's go to File, Save first. And we're gonna save it as 01.c xcf so this is the gimp file that we're going to save first so let's save that that's our work saved you can change the blur now you can do other things to it if you want afterwards and let's go to file export and we want to export it let's select file types here and we're going to go to jpeg jpeg here and we're just going to call it 01.jpeg and export and we leave it at 90 percent compression is fine leave all these settings as they are and click export then we're going to go to file save as 
we're going to save it as version 2 because we're going to do some more work but we want to retain these original images we can duplicate them in here but i just like saving them as two separate files it's entirely your choice so now this is a new gimp file that we can manipulate separately away from the original file um, and what we want to do is create a horizon and create a grayscale for our depth map for facebook so to do that um what we will do is hide the trees first and we'll create a new layer so let's create a new layer so click on the background here create a new layer by clicking here and we want to set it to transparency so make sure transparency is set and click ok and then we're going to use the box tool here or the rectangle select tool and in the swatches at the top here we want to select black so just move your mouse cursor to the very bottom uh, left or right hand corner and that will be black and click OK and then w where this line is here in the background right well, you can't really see a line there but that's kind of a horizon there so we're going to drag from the top here to that horizon point so you can kind of guesstimate where the horizon sort of is going to be in this image around here and then we'll use the fill tool the bucket tool we've got the black already selected and we're going to fill it black like this then we'll create a, let's call this um, BG1 so we rename it to BG1 we're going to create another new layer let's create a new layer that will be transparent as well so here we've got another new layer let's call this BG2 and this time we want to create a gradient here so let's go to select none let's make sure the background two layer is selected let's go to the gradient tool here and in the drop down here we need to make sure default is selected here grayscale which is default here and make sure that uh, in the shape is set to linear here then we'll move our mouse cursor to this point here just below the horizon or just above it slightly hold down the control key and drag down to here like just past the canvas about here that's going to create this grayscale and that's pretty good so let's click the move tool to accept that and now we've got this grayscale done uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, we can enable the, the shadow that's fine for now but let's enable the tree and the tree we want to actually change its color so there's a few different ways to do this but the easy way really is to click on the tree let's go to color let's go to desaturate and then let's do desaturate that makes it grayscale let's go back to color let's go to levels and set it to uh, black so now it's a black tree and then let's go back to color and let's go to brightness and contrast and we'll cre increase the brightness until the tree looks around this sort of gray i'm saying it's around 45 45 should be pretty good so you want the tree to be a little bit of a gray sort of dark gray color the background behind it is all black the shadow can be black as well that's left black that's okay and then we've got this little gray scale down here and this has become our depth map so let's go to file save let's go to file export as and we want to export it as a jpeg file but we'll, this time we want to call it 01 underscore depth d-e-p-t-h that's really important the original file is called 01.jpg the depth map is called 01 underscore depth dot jpeg and we're going to click export we'll leave it at 90 percent compression and click export again and we can just go to file save and minimize this so inside our folder we're left with our main image this is the main image here and we're left with the depth map on this side so we're going to use these combination of these two images in facebook to create the 3d photo now so let's just see yep let's just see so let's close this let's open up my web browser i'm already on my facebook page here this is a little uh, 3d photo i created in photoshop so i've just done a tutorial on that so if you check my youtube channel you'll see a, a different tutorial using photoshop to create this particular depth map uh, maybe i'll redo this one in gimp as well at some point but let's click on the tree the image and let's hold down the control key and click on the depth map so we select both of these and in this right a post we're going to drag and drop it here and we'll click inside and facebook is going to upload it detect that one of them is called zero one underscore depth and if you notice the file names are the same the only difference is one's called underscore depth that's really important the file names need to be the same but this one should be with an underscore depth after it and now we can see the 3d effect that we get so we're able to move the mouse and we get this sort of 
the 3D effect with the, with the shadow moving and then the tree kind of moving in the background here. It looks pretty cool. So let's click post. Let's in fact call this uh, 3D photo V4. I think it's V4. Let's see. Okay, so we can click on that and now we can see it large and it's working pretty well. It looks pretty cool. So that's how you go about creating a 3D photo using GIMP software. This one's not perfect. We can tweak it and we can play around with it. You can play around with the color in the depth map of this tree. So if you were to go back to this image in GIMP, you can change the color of this tree, make it a slightly lighter or a darker shade, and that would affect the, the 3D depth map. You can also change this gradient here. So you might start the gradient higher up, or you might start it lower down, and that will also affect this 3D effect here as well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. We didn't spend very long creating this. And uh, you can use a combination of any images. The only reason I picked the tree is so that we didn't have to cut around the image. The tree, when you download it from the link that I give you in the YouTube description, will already be have an alpha channel applied to it. So it'll already be a transparent image. So this should be really quick and easy for you to recreate using uh, GIMP software. So let's close this down. I hope you find that tutorial useful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.